welcome to this channel. My name is Janet. I'm working through the King James's Bible. Today I'm in the book of Deuteronomy. I'm working through chapters 1 and 2 today, so we're just getting started. And because of that, I wanted to give you some information about this book. It is actually the last book in the Torah, so if you're Jewish you will know that. And also the name itself means second law. Why is it named second law? Well, in Mount Sinai, Moses gave the first commandments, the first law, to the Israelites. And this book itself is about Moses going over that again to the younger generation, because if you remember, they have been in the wilderness now for 40 years. And why? Because the older generation failed to follow the commandments of God. So they were then banished to the wilderness, and God is now waiting until that younger generation come forth so he can then lead them into the promised land. The book itself also was very precious to Jesus, who quoted it three times during his temptations with Satan. So, um, yeah, it's got a lot of um, special qualities about it. So let us get into chapter one right now. So we begin at a very pivotal point in the Israelites' history. They are on the east side of the Jordan River in Moab. They have been in the wilderness for 40 years and Moses is there speaking to them. He's giving them like a sermon. He's going over now what he's learned and the rules and the commandments and the laws with God. So he is now relaying this to this younger generation and a lot of them are very young and some really he's trying to get to those that are not even born. So we're at this place in the 40th year of the 11th month on the first day and Moses is standing in front of the Israelites and he is now going to give his sermon. And he starts by giving his words and instructions for life that God has given him. He's just deepening the teachings of God with the people and also learning from the older generation where they went wrong and how to sort of correct that. He's sort of hoping that by relaying this information and the rules clearly showing examples of what happens when you follow the opposite side because you know following the Lord you will be blessed but if you disobey the Lord you end up being cursed that is what happens so Moses begins his recollection at Mount Horab which is another name for Mount Sinai so we start our journey from here and he said the Lord spoke to us at Horab and after being given all the rules and commandments from the Lord they were asked to move on after a year to the promised land now, as the Israelites had grown in numbers, Moses had felt overwhelmed and he could not bear the responsibility alone. So he asked the Lord for some help. And so 70 elders were chosen to assist Moses in running the camp, who would be obedient to the Lord. He said he also took the leaders of each tribe, each families, remember, and made them leaders over each of you. Then Moses recalls his disbelief when the Israelites refused to enter the Promised Land when they arrived at Kadesh Barani. This is when they had the Promised Land right in their sights. And God told us to go up and possess it, he says, not to fear or be discouraged, because you've got the Lord on your side. But Israel were a bit concerned that they wanted to send spies. They wanted to check out the land to see how they would navigate it, and how they would overcome the current residents. But Moses says, this was fine with me, so I chose the 12 tribe leaders to go into the land and spy on it and bring back information, which they did. But really, there was no need for this if they believed in the Lord, in God, and had that faith. They wouldn't need to go and check out the land. This is what Moses is kind of relaying to these young Israelites. Now, when the tribe members returned, they told us how great the land was, that it was abundant, and they even brought some fruit back to show us, you know, what they had uncovered. However, ten of the tribe leaders that came back were fearful. They described how there were giants there, and that the land was like overrun with these people that they would never be able to overcome, that we as a people would be crushed like grasshoppers. It was only two of the leaders, Caleb and Joshua, that had faith in God. And because of that, they really believed that they could overcome these people in the land of Canaan. They knew they could do it. They had the Lord on their side. They just knew after all that had happened, what they'd witnessed, what they'd seen, that God himself was a cloud. He was guiding us. There was a fire coming out of the tabernacle at night that kept the camps a little. 
all of these things were, were evidence to those two men who knew with God on their side they could win the battle. But the Israelites, when they heard this news from the ten tribe members, they were scared and fearful and they thought God hated them. They thought God had just brought them out of Egypt to be killed by the Amorites. And they just reiterated what the ten fearful tribe members had said. They're, they're bigger, they're stronger, and their cities are more fortified. It's like fear has got into them. And Moses says, I told the Israelites not to fear, to trust in God. There was nothing to fear. And that the Lord would fight for the Israelites. He was there alongside them. I even asked the Israelites to remember and recall all of the things God had already done for them. There were so many plagues that happened in Egypt to get them free from there. He opened up the Red Sea. All of these amazing things I asked the Israelites to recall in their minds, to know on seeing those truths that they could overcome the battle with the Amorites. And yet still the people of Israel did not believe. Instead they rebelled and complained. And God got to a point where he had to make an oath. And that oath that God made was that the older generation, your parents, had to stay in the wilderness until they were no more. And those generations would not enter the promised land. It would only be the generations of Caleb and Joshua's tribe that would be allowed now to enter. Even myself, I lost my opportunity to guide you into the promised land because I went against the Lord and I hit a rock instead of talking to it to bring water to you all. I went against what I was told. But you have an opportunity. You will all inherit the land. Now once God had made this oath and the people realised they were going to be in the wilderness now for 40 years, they decided to switch things and they wanted to go and fight them all of a sudden. And they were getting ready and they were going out there to fight. And I told them, no, don't go, because the Lord is not with you. He's not said to go right now. He said, no, he will not abide with you. Don't do it. You're going to, you know, things are going to go wrong. They wouldn't listen again. And they went out and they went and fought the Amorites. And the Amorites won. They just slayed them and the remainder of the tribe that had gone out there to fight them came back crying and weeping because they'd lost the battle. They didn't have God on their side. And so here we remained in Kadesh for many days. And this is where chapter one closes. Now, as we move into this chapter, Moses begins by recalling the wilderness years and the march onto Canaan. So they are taking a detour, remember, because they're going to be out there 40 years. So God will be guiding them with the tabernacle, with that cloud of smoke and the fire at night that constantly guides them. And as they are moving through the wilderness, they arrive at Mount Seir. And here God says to them, do not harass or meddle with Esau, nor fight them or disturb them for their land. God had given this land to Esau as their inheritance. Now as they moved through it, they were told to use silver to buy any food or any water. So they were to move through this land gracefully and peacefully. Now, during the whole 40 years that the Israelites have been in the wilderness, they were so taken care of by God. He made sure they had food. He made sure they had water, shelter, light at night, you know, everything was covered. And if they needed anything, they just had to go to him and he would bring a solution, which he did many times with Moses, you know, going to the rock and bringing water when they were thirsty. He was always there for them. Got to remember this as we move on, as they are journeying in the wilderness. And as they are moving on, they're moving towards more land which has more people on it. So again, the people that they're coming up against are the Moabites. And again, God says, do not meddle with them because God gave heir to the descendant of Lot, the next section of land that they're coming up to. So Esau and Ammon had fought a battle with the Anakims and Horims to take up this land. And so the Israelites agreed and they did not disturb them and they moved through their land peacefully. Now, as for the rest of the inhabitants surrounding the areas, they're hearing it's on the grapevine that they know that the Israelites are coming through and one particular group are very fearful of them. And this was King Sihon. 
and his heart was hardened by God because he wanted to bring them into the fighting arms of the Israelites. They were going to take over that land and win battle with them because obviously God wanted them out of that land and he wanted the Israelites to take that on. And so what God wishes is commanded and this is what happened. They went towards the king, he wouldn't let them go through the land and so they went to battle and they won and they fought there. And this is where this chapter ends as they occupy that area of land. So they're slowly starting to move towards taking all the lands and getting into places and, you know, hopefully learning from that big rebellion mistake of going against God. And now as they, as Moses is recalling these stories to the younger generation, he's showing them, you know, things are starting to look better now as we are following the Lord's commands. And each time we do, things go right. When we don't, things go terribly wrong. So that is the first two chapters in this book and I'll be back again tomorrow for more chapters within the book of Deuteronomy. Thanks for being here. Bye. Mm -hmm.